Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us um, here at Anui Anui USA. We have a very, very special guest, a good friend of ours. She's very, very talented, a wonderful ukulele player, teacher, and a good person to know. <laughs> Miss uh, Cynthia Lynn. You are too kind. <laughs> Hi everyone. Yeah. Good to be here. Thanks thanks so much for joining us here. We have the this new town studio location where we've been shooting some of the videos and um, thank you for making the timing and joining us here and I'm sure a lot of you who are watching right now are excited to um, hear about what some of the stuff Cynthia has planned and some of the things that we worked on just specifically for this video cool and cynthia actually um, brought up a great idea to kind of talk about some of the processes and ideas and things when it comes to arranging um, ukulele pieces whether if it's for an instrumental or in this case we have someone who does not sing someone who <laughs> sings very well and see how that kind of works out and um why don't we tell tell them a little bit about this song and kind of like why it, it was, we thought it was a good piece to kind of yeah. kind of go over and try to come up with an arrangement. Right. Well, thank you for being willing to play this with me. This uh, so uh, my patrons, my Patreon community, they asked me to teach them "Stairway to Heaven." This was all the way back in 2017. Um, so I I didn't really know the song "Stairway to Heaven" before then. You know, it's mm. it's just I, like. I was really into more folk singer songwriter stuff and never really got into the classic rock stuff. So I basically had to learn Stairway to Heaven and it's such a, a long song. It's such a behemoth of a song. It is, yeah. And it's so <laughs> iconic that you know you want to get it right. So I actually um, taught it to my patrons in three parts. Nice. Right, so and because the, the song kind of naturally breaks into three parts, it right? Does. Part one is that like really iconic riff that everybody's like you know like don't play stairway to heaven i mean you gotta play it it sounds so cool and i figured out a way to put it on the ukulele where it still like would be easy to play for most people you know i simplified it into just one pattern that's good it's not exactly the riff but it was close close enough um but I think for our performance today, we can kind of still, you know, make it our own, you know? Yeah. And, and that's the thing about these arrangements. It's like, it's the foundation that you can build on. And you don't have to um, play it exactly after you learn the, the arrangement, then you can, um, you know, make it sound like the original or you can give it your own flavor, right? Because uh, like, what's your familiarity with the song? Yeah. I mean, like one of, the things that like I always did remember about Stairway to Heaven was that intro, that main riff that yeah. you were talking about. When anybody hears the, just those first two chords, right. you don't even have to do the right. picking. All you gotta do is just strum it, just yeah. like, and yeah. then, and it's then you know what chord. song it is. What you know? a cool chord, right? Like what type of, like how many songs out there can anybody just like name right off of the right. top of the head by listening to the first two chords? Yeah, yeah. Um, not much, and this yeah. is one of them. Maybe just. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You do something like that, like for these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. was I playing the wrong? Key? Oh, I wasn't playing the wrong key. Oh no no, you were actually playing it. No no no, no right I was notes, playing it. But you played it in major. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing in D D minor. D minor. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So part one was relatively easy to tackle. Part two was ex was a little bit harder. But um, still, you know, I could put it into two different parts, right? You have that bridge that's still got weird timing. Yeah. You know, the thing about... Um, I know, that was one of the parts that was kind of like throwing me Yeah. Off. Because it's not like your standard timing, you know? Right. It's like, for me, it's like I'm always so used to everything always being directly on B, right. either the down You wanted or the to start up, on the one, yeah. you, know? <laughs> you know? And Led Zeppelin, um, they didn't, you know, write music, like, according to music theory. Mm -hmm. They were really just jamming and yeah. feeling it, right? Well, even, so like, the, other groups, like the Beatles, they did right. stuff like that, too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and I would say, like, 
it it's it really gives music its own flavor, right? Yep. That like if you're always so square with it, it can become boring. For a lot of my beginners, I like specifically teach them stuff that's always on the one, you know, like mm. one, two, three, yeah. four, one, because it's easier to hang on to. But that, I guess that was the hardest part of section two that you had to figure out that timing, you know, the, the one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It almost becomes like to a part where, like, you're not really even thinking of timing. You're yeah. just kind of feeling, feeling it. it. Yeah. You know, and I think that's one of the be- the things that makes like a song great. When you think about it, like, why is this song so iconic? It's because it sounds so different. There's not nothing else out there that sounds like it. Right. So when you add, you know, stuff like that to, you know, songs or um, any type of arrangement or composition, yeah, it just makes it stand out so much right. more. And yeah, I think that's a big reason why a lot of people are still to this day love this. They this love tune. this song, and it because it's unconventional. It's hard to pin down yeah. about how to play it. So I think that's why um, my patrons and my fans came to me to say like, please teach us how to play this because we can't figure it out on our own, right? Because mm. so you know you can you you do have to listen to it a lot and kind of grasp the timing of it and then apply the the, uh, the tutorial to it um, so that part um, the picking is cool that little interlude the oh. and then you have this weird transition to part three yeah right? okay it's like dnc the whole time yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um, I actually did a lot of YouTube research to figure out what the exact timing was. You know, it's uh, like you search the internet and then there are these YouTube videos that are like, what's actually going on in the bridge and stairway to heaven? This. And um, I forget which channel it was. This one guy uh, explained what the timing was, the fact that that after the transition to part three, right, you have this one and two, it seems like it's a pickup. It seems like it's yeah. that one, because two, three. Because when we were going three, through it, I was like, right. that's a pickup. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> you, know? you, you reminded me, and I was like, no, it's, it's actually like a whole section. It's not a pickup. Well, the <laughs> thing is, I, I also thought about, like, do I want to simplify it to a point where, you know, it's easier to grasp? It's like, what I'm playing or what I'm teaching people to play or what we, you know, what we're playing is not maybe exactly what Led Zeppelin played, but it's close enough that you can kind of then like feel it out and play along with the original recording, mm-hmm. you know? Um, it, just the same way, like if you're like trying to transcribe like a Troy Fernandez solo, right? Yeah. You, you get pretty close, but are you ever like exactly what he's playing? Yeah, and I mean, that's the, the challenge because like, I mean, everyone has like a different type of touch, a different yeah. type of feel. So to fully replicate it 100% is, I mean, I'm just going to say it flat out, it's impossible. It's <laughs> like, um, when you listen to like all these graves, only they sound like that. Right. You, know, you can get kind of close, but then there's a part of you that makes that song sound like you, which makes it sound unique. Right. And different. And that's okay. It's okay to, for it to sound different. And I, I think that's an important thing for folks to understand about artists. You know, Kalei's an artist, I believe that I'm an artist, (laughs) meaning that we're not just taking this music and just trying to spit it back. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to take the music and interpret it through our own musical lens. And I think that's what makes an artist, you know, that um, you're not afraid to, to... to break the rules after you learn the rules. Yeah. You know, you got to learn the musical rules and then you're free to break them however you want, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's good for, for students, you know, people who are learning ukulele or learning music at all to remember that. But it if, is. Yeah. Um, that, uh, if you're... If you want music to be prescribed too much when you're learning it, then you might never get to um, experiment with your own expression of it. You know? That's true. Yeah. yeah. Like how how long were you playing before you felt like you got to like really kind of break out of the rules? I mean, it took took a while. It wasn't. It was probably like when I was about four, between four and six years into playing. Oh wow! That I was like, I want to, you know 
give my own take on something. Yeah. I want to be able to arrange my own songs. Yeah. I want to be able to write pieces on the ukulele with ideas that I have. But I didn't know where to start. Right. You know, it's like when we're talking about like learning the rules and having a good base and foundation and then kind of altering them and changing some of it. You know, as you get more and more experience with it, um, it takes know. learning a lot of those rules, like spending a lot of time yeah. learning the rules, learning other people's songs. Yeah. yeah, and also like spending time with your instrument, knowing like how this rule will respond to like this type of song versus, oh, you know, like every song was, well, pretty much sound the same if on this instrument. But really, it's, uh, you know, all these little things come into play when you're arranging pieces, especially like what we. You know we're gonna be showcasing in, in a little bit. Um, right. It's not a an easy song. Um, there's a lot of different parts. I mean, even like when we're talking about like high G, low G. Mm-hmm. You know that is another, um, I guess, aspect of arranging pieces for for your instrument, also for your vocals too. Right. Uh, the interesting thing about arranging for the ukulele is that like with four strings, you have such a limited range of you know octave range um and in a way it's kind of it, it's a, a, a really different challenge than arranging for most instruments right it's such a limited range but you have to figure out how to do as much as you can with just four notes you know? yeah um, and that's why actually like this first chord right sounds so good right you can really achieve it with only four strings yeah, yeah. and with that low g you really hear that bass note yeah down so you can right you know play it you know in the correct inversion yeah right if you don't have the low g do you want to show it on, on a high g yeah so, so yeah. oh so, yeah you yeah you have that you know this is how it would sound it still sounds like it right and then still sounds oh. like it but that walk down right? there's that walk down and then there's that that really nice warm that just I guess like bass blanket that yeah. like low G kind of you know yeah. puts over all the other notes I've definitely moved over to low G um, in the past few years and just kind of stayed there oh really <laughs> right now I'm like I'm trying to like get good or getting more comfortable at playing low G because there's so much you know different sounds you can get from it yeah. and chord voicings but you know um, especially when you're uh, arranging a piece like this, I want to be able to come up with different parts for both low right. and high G because I'm so used to playing a high G over the years. Everything's all based off of that, you know, technique-wise, even the way I strum and pick. They're almost like two different instruments, you know, the Pretty approach much. that you're learning. So um, I I say have one of each. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you don't have two ukes, get another uke. <laughs> uh, find a way to get another uke and have one that's high G, one that's low G. They're really, I feel like, such different approaches. So it's good yeah. to spend time with You're going to need like one high G, one low G, soprano. So that's two sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> now you need two concerts, two tenors, and two baritones. <laughs> So then you have, end up having a UAS problem. <laughs> but don't worry, Google has make people happy, especially the music that comes with it. It's it, UAS, which is ukulele acquisition syndrome. It's um, it's a disease that affects almost everybody who picks up the yeah. ukulele. So yeah. just go with it. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, we all get to a point where like um, we know which one are our favorites, right? But yeah. each one has such a different sound. So. Each one does have a, a different sound, and yeah. you know, it's, um, each instrument that you own may inspire different ideas. Definitely, you know? I think as composers, um, as writers, you know, like when we when we feel a, a certain bond, or when we play a, a uke, a, a chord on one ukulele, right? Mm-hmm. It might inspire um, some musical ideas that doesn't happen playing that same chord on a different ukulele. Yeah. So it's very, it's very specific. It is. It's very specific and it's very interesting because sometimes that, that types of ideas and um, you know kind of it comes from things when you least expect it. That's it could true. be from like, oh, let me try out my friend's ukulele, and then I was like, wow, okay, I got this idea. You go back home and you finish it, and 
you know, it's awesome because like the more you explore, the more options you have, and yeah. the more ideas you come with. And then, you know, you can eventually collaborate on songs such as Stare with the Heaven with your friends <laughs> and come up with something different and unique. So I remember when we were, you know, going through the arrangement and practicing it a few times, I was just trying to figure out, you know, some ideas and chord voicings that will complement what you're doing. Yeah. Because a lot of what you're doing, you have the low G and you're playing mostly down here. Right. So rather than me kind of mimicking and mirroring what you're doing, I was trying to think of what could I do up here yeah. that could add a little bit more. I love the know. flavor you're adding. That's a whole other skill. Like I feel like I haven't really worked on that skill as much. Just um, you know, reharmonizing to complement the, the lower chords. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's something that's a real challenge because, like, even though I've been practicing that for some time, when I'm playing with other people, sometimes my hands will you know, move into that same type of chord that they're holding without me noticing and then I catch myself it's like, no, I should be playing up here mm -hmm. or down here. Mm. Vice versa. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we got through the song and um, yeah. know, it, was, it was a fun, fun arrangement. <laughs> great experience to be able to play an iconic sound song and give it a new twist yeah especially with the ukuleles and um you know for my fans like i i wanted a a version of uh you know the ukulele arrangement from top to bottom that they could play along with you know i have a a part one tutorial a part two tutorial i'm gonna put a part three tutorial out i promise i know people have been asking for it for like three years um but i want yeah, I want folks to learn the whole song and then be able to play along with our version from top yeah. to bottom, from yeah, from the beginning to the end. So, yeah, everybody have fun playing with that. Clay, thank you so much for yeah, joining me to you. play the whole thing. No, thank you. It's a beast of a song. <laughs> it's definitely one of the songs that's it's a lot more fun when you get to play it with other people. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, we're about to play a song from Led Zeppelin. Here is our arrangement of Stairway to Heaven.
my spirit is crying for of smoke through the trees and the voices of those